gifts that come to us in this church. For those of you who will join us online, if you want to get a copy of the bulletin, follow along the service through our webpage, www.calvarypeoria.org, and then look under media and you'll see where you can download a copy of this. For the rest of you all, if you take time to fill out one of the registration cards, the next to the envelope for you, and drop off the offering plate, we really appreciate your help with that. And with that said, everyone take a moment to wait for another. We'll all of them officially in peace with each other. We'll let us remember that. Okay, and this point is all hail the power of Jesus' name, 549.
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that our sin is to you, God, worthy of thee, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with all of our heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence.
the Lord reigns. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar all that fills it. Let the field exult at everything in it. And shall all the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord, for He comes, for He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in His faithfulness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy
revolutionary. That would mean he is a bad actor and they tried to arrest him. So they thought, yeah, we got Jesus, he's going to answer this question and we're going to be able to take care of once and for all. Do you think Jesus was going to play their game? Not at all, no. And so he says, hey, you know, bring me one of your coins. And, and they found a coin. He said, okay, whose picture is on this coin? Now, we all have seen coins, right? We've got pictures like George Washington is on the border. And if you've seen a penny, who's on the penny? That used to be Abraham Lincoln, right? And then, so we have pictures of people. Well, on the Roman coins, there was a picture of the guy who was Caesar. And they said, well, who's the Caesar's picture? And, and she said, okay, give the Caesar the stuff that's his. But more importantly, give to God the things that are His. Is there anything that doesn't belong to God? <laughs> and, and you know, I'm going to explain this to, to, to the adults. What this means, if you look at the whole day that Jesus had his controversy, rendering to God the things that are His means to recognize His Son, Jesus, as the one sent to redeem us. To recognize Jesus as the one who is God in the flesh, to fulfill all righteousness, and to redeem us from death and hell by His death and resurrection. So Jesus does not get trapped. They marvel how to get out of that situation. But more importantly, we understand that we are called to render to God the things are his. And that begins with listening to Jesus, recognizing him as the one that God has sent, and then following him the way he leads. Amen? All right. Then we come to the rest of the service. <laughs> first reading this morning is from the prophet Isaiah, the 45th chapter. Thus says the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue the nations before him and to loose the belts of kings, to open doors before him that gates may not be closed. I will go before you and level the exalted places. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you treasures of darkness and the hordes in secret places, that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call you by your name. For the sake of my servant, the servant Jacob and Israel have chosen, I call you by your name. I name you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me, that people may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. Here I am reading, O Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Second reading now comes from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, the first chapter. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers loved by God, that he has chosen you, because our gospel came to you not only in word, but also in power of the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know the kind of men we proved to be among you for your sake, and you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Acadia. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Acadia, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere, so we need not say anything. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of perception we had among you. How you turned to God from idols to serve the living and the true God, and away from the Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Here is the greeting, O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. I pray you to stand with the gospel. Hallelujah. You have been filled in him. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, as recorded in the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Though the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words, and they said, 
sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of the malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness and inscription is this? They said, Caesar's. And he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ.
And I thank you all for his mercy and peace from God the Father, from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Now, if you think about it, that doesn't really answer the question that they put to Jesus, does it? And they were asking whether it was lawful, that is, whether it was in accord with God's will to set forth in the Torah, whether it was lawful to pay taxes to Caesar, the foreign oppressor and occupier of the promised land. But Jesus doesn't care about that question. He sees right through their attempt to trap him and turns the table on them with respect to the law. But as always, the question to us is, what's here for me? What am I given in this word with this passage? And the simple answer is, you too are called to render to God the things that are His. But what that means exactly is His will work to uncover. So let me preface all this with a couple of observations. First, the discussion of Caesar and God here is not an invitation to contemplate the relation of church and state, or the two realms in which God operates to bring His gifts to us men and women. So we're not going to worry about that. Second, one of the difficulties with preaching the lectionary, that is, with going with the assigned readings that we have from week to week, is they actually build on one another. And sometimes we need to hold on to the themes and the teachings for several weeks in order to get what a particular reading is giving to us now. So let me set the stage for getting at what it means to render to God the things that are His. As the Pharisees and Herodians came to Jesus with their clever question, it was still Tuesday what we call Holy Week, which means that the cross and the empty tomb are not far away at this point. The work that Jesus was come to do to redeem all the fallen humanity according to his Father's will was about to be concluded, and that colors all of what is going on here. Now, if you have been following the readings of the last few weeks, you'll remember that the religious leaders of Jerusalem had questioned Jesus about his authority to do what he was doing the city as it was a king chasing out the animal sellers and money changers from the temple court guard and then teaching the people. Jesus deflected their question by asking them why they had not heeded John the Baptist and then he told parables about those two sons and about the wicked tenant farmers and about the banquet uh, where there were guests less than excited about being in the presence of his son. The leaders knew that Jesus was talking about them and they wanted to wrestle with him but the crowds were still listening to Jesus as if he was a prophet, and the leaders did not want to stir things up. But they did want to get rid of Jesus. And so they plotted how they might discredit him in front of those crowds, and they thought that they could do that with a hot-button question that had only two possible answers, which they thought would hack off at least half of the crowds, no matter what Jesus answered. While you and I don't necessarily get a feel for the issue that they raised about taxes, we do you know questions that can lead to controversy no matter how they are answered? For instance, what do you all think about President Trump? No, don't answer. Right? <laughs> In our culture at this point, no matter what a person says in response to that question, there are going to be folks who will be angry. Also, too, with the question about Caesar and taxes. If Jesus had said, yes, pay those taxes to Caesar, the Jewish nationalists would have been angry because Jesus said it was okay to support the occupiers. On the other hand, if Jesus had said no, that he was a rebel against the establishment and in danger of bringing Rome's anger down on the nation, the Herodians, the Pharisees, thought they had Jesus trapped. But notice, Jesus doesn't play their game. And here's the first takeaway for us. Whenever someone asks, is it lawful? That is, is it in accord with God's will, such that doing these things will get you God's approval or not doing them will get you in trouble with God? Stop right there. The law is not how we are justified before God, period. Now, this isn't to say that there isn't right and wrong in God's eyes or that we shouldn't do good and avoid doing evil, but that's not how you and I are made right with God. And yet, we adequately know that we are made right by the law all the time. In the heart, in the ego of our old nature, we measure ourselves against the law and against each other and act as if that gives us our standing before God. We act as if there's some heavenly accounting book up there recording all of our good and bad deeds, and we think that if we have more good than bad, well, we're okay. And if my balance of good over bad is better than someone else's balance, then that means I'm better than that person. We have to stop. 
man, a person is not justified by the deeds of the law. All of us sin and fall short of the glory. All of us have nothing on our own to boast of. If you will, none of us can claim to have more good than bad in our heavenly account book. We are all sinners. We are all condemned. Just, period. The law, what is lawful, does not justify it. It shows rather how far we are from living with God as we were created to. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? It doesn't matter. You're not. You are lost to sin. And you are lost to the kingdom, whether you pay taxes or not. So what then? Well, flee to where you can be justified. Receive the Son who was sent to you. Receive his forgiveness and his righteousness. But that's not what the religious leaders were doing. They refused to receive the Son. So Jesus didn't answer their question. Rather, he left them with a challenge. Render to Caesar what is his, but more importantly, render to God what is his. What this means is essentially, don't get all worked up about government and the order of this world. It will be what it will be, regardless of what you do or don't do. So let Caesar have what is his. After all, Jesus will say to Pilate in just a few days, my kingdom is not of this world. And yet, we get worked up about this stuff all the time, right? You know, which part of it is doing what? Or what policies aren't being enacted, or which ones aren't being enacted, or, or which guy got caught acting corruptly this week, and so on. And, and don't get me wrong, for the good of my neighbor, I don't ignore the government, I don't ignore secular society, I do the good where I can, when I can, but I don't let that distract me from what really matters, which is rendering to God the things that are His. So what does that mean? Is it about how much time we devote in prayer and worship, devotion, Bible study? Is it about how much we put in the offering plate or how much we volunteer at church? Everything is God's after all. How do we render to Him what is His? Is it about what Paul meant when he wrote to the Romans, saying, present yourselves as a living sacrifice to God? Not exactly. If we've been holding on to the simple issue presented to us in our gospel readings the last few weeks, we'll see that time and time again, the leaders, the authorities, and even the crowds did not recognize Jesus for who he truly is. Even the twelve who had been with him for three years don't seem to grasp who he is or what he was coming to do. So you do not. At times we miss it as well. Remember the catechism, I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ by the Lord will come to him. And when we fail to recognize the anointed Son, the Savior of the nations, the Lamb who was slain, but behold, he lives, when we fail to see him as the justifier of the fallen and the Redeemer who has taken away the curse of the law, then we are not rendering to God the things that are his. We are not coming to the wedding feast. We are not yielding the fruit of the vineyard to his master. And this is why we need to give up trying to justify ourselves by the law. For to the degree that we think we've done our part or added to our holiness, we have withheld the glory that is due to the Son, and we've not rendered to God what we should. So how then do we render to God and receive the Son as He is? Well, the Holy Spirit calls us by the Gospel, He enlightens us with His gifts, and He keeps us in faith with Christ, which means that we repent of all the ways that we have turned from God to go our own way. And then we receive Jesus as the one who brings us to the Father through His death and resurrection, and in receiving Him, we listen to Him, and in listening to Him, we follow where He leads believing that he and he alone is our life and salvation. So render to the world what it is due, and render to God your heart and your faith by receiving the Son, even so. Amen. And now may that peace is passed with all understanding that our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus and to the glorious day of security. Amen. I want you to stand as we join together to sing the new today. <laughs>
gracious to all of his soldiers. And with our Senate and all of his officers, that person, our President, my Lord, District President, and all seven and district officials, that they may be guided by your word and do those things that are pleasing to your sight. Get stability, faith, and hope that all of our children in this economy, bless the people of Haiti as they struggle to recover and establish a state of civil life, grant shelter and protection to all refugees, especially those displaced by the conflict in Syria and Gaza. Finally, I ask that you send your spirit of peace to Sudan, Somalia, Myanmar, Venezuela, Afghanistan, Ethiopia, Kenya, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Nagorno, Karabakh, the Middle East, especially Iraq, Egypt, Syria, Yemen, and all places torn by war or civil strife. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We also ask that while our nation continues to live in peril, and while many remain in harm's way, that you would watch over us and show your mercy to all who are in danger or who suffer in any way. Those who are injured in wisdom and humility to those in authority. Continue to be with Gary Cook, Joshua Zook, Alex Zook, Elizabeth Bowers, and Garrison, and all employed in that duty military personnel and their families. Protect all innocent civilians everywhere. Bring the wicked to justice. Defend the righteous and lead all of them to be able to see their peace. We know that all things are in your hands, Father. And we ask that you would bring justice and establish fair government according to your good and perfect will. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah, oh Lord, our heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have saved and brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us and save with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of pain, but that all our good to be ordered by your governments may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Property Board asked me to mark the calendars for November 4th, where we'll be doing a general cleanup outdoors to try and get everything ready for the winter. Uh, our fall cookout is on this afternoon at 3 over at Doug Hour's place, and the instructions for playing in his house are there in the news and announcements. We've got extra copies out in the north, actually, we need that. Uh, Thanksgiving bags for our shut in. We tried to get little goodie bags out to them uh, prior to Thanksgiving, so if you want to start contributing non perishable items to that, please do so. Also, adopted bags are available. Hall for some families in our congregation that need a little extra help for the Thanksgiving holidays. Food pantry needs are in your news announcements. They I encourage you to give uh, as you are able. Uh, that Reformation Hymn Festival is happening at Trinity next week. If you want information about that, we'll sing with their festival choir. The information is in news and announcements. And then last but not least, the first Saturday in November, there's a walk for pancreatic cancer. There is a teen bruise out there. And if you want to sign up to uh, go ahead and provide uh, assistance to Thank you very much for research in this honor. Please do so. Is there